up and welcome back. So today's true crime case I have for you is about the Snake River John Doe. And if you're new here, I'm Liz. This is Create Crime Time. I'm your host. I sit down, I talk about a true crime case, and I sometimes make a work of art at the same time. So if you're interested and you want to support my channel, you like true crime, you like art, hit that red subscribe button. Turn that bell notification on to all. Let's get into today's true crime case. <laughs> so. <sighs> yes. 26th of July, 1982. The body of a white male was discovered in Snake River near Lewiston in Nez Perce County. So he had been dead for two to three days prior to him being discovered. The Doe Network gives, gives a longer estimation of time for his death and they believe that he could have died in January of 1982. So again, discrepancies. There's going to be a lot of them because each person that does a profile or an autopsy or exam of remains will determine something different because they might see something in a different way that somebody else does. So it's like when we discussed Little Miss Nobody. So with Little Miss Nobody, it's, it was hard to determine her age because of her size, because people grow at different rates. So it's hard to determine the exact age of a person due to the fact that they could be Something could be malformed, something could be different when it comes to body shape, when it comes to height and weight, stuff like that. Like, it, with each person, it's different, okay? So, oh, and this is in Idaho. I didn't say Idaho. So this is in Nez Perce County, Idaho. All right, so he was shot twice with a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson gun um, in this model. This is a particular fact about this case. So this model wasn't built after 1967. So the person that had this gun has had it for a while. And you think that this would help in, um, you know, discovering who he is, but apparently not. And um, so his wounds, his gunshot wounds were on his neck and his shoulder. He was aged to be in between 18 to 20. Um, there is another discrepancy with that. Some people have 18 to 20, some people have 18 to 22. So, um, according to the, um, according to different reports, um, this estimate is inaccurate and th there's certain reports that put him at 18 to 99. So it's just to really like cover all of the bases. So the county sheriff also as well gives some conflicting information about this case. So the conflicting information that was given um, says that this man was between 13 to 20. So, and I hate when stuff like this happens. So some person's gonna say something, then somebody, they run with it, then somebody else says something else. So there's like huge controversy when it comes to these cases. Um, so, <sighs> despite him being predeceased for several months, a scar was found on one of his ankles and there was no other distinguishable marks on his body. He is believed to have been white, but he may have been Hispanic. Um, height and weight was estimated to be about 5'11 in height, and weight was determined to be about 145 to 160. Uh, there was no, like, dental abnormalities observed, but they did notice that there was excellent care provided for his teeth because there was no cavities present. He was wearing swimwear, um, and the swimwear was in an American flag print, and he had white socks on. So his case, this case, was reopened in 2012. So they could work on it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. So he had short, straight, dark brown hair, 
um, that could have been black and it was about three to four inches in length. So uh, the scar on his ankle was about two inches long. Both of the palms of his hands had corns or calluses on them, which suggested that he probably worked in manual labor. So the, the swimming trunks he had on, he had like Britannia jeans over the swimming trunks. And that was something that wasn't really like put out for a while. And the swimming trunks he had on was a brand called California Sun. The white socks he also had on had blue and red stripes at the top. So I'm assuming that he had tube socks on. And the underwear that he had on underneath the swim trunks, which also is another thing that is not really talked about. So the jeans and the underwear is not really talked about. Mostly it's just the swimwear. So... When I first found this case, I was like, what? He was murdered just in his underwear, in his swimwear? Like, there's nothing else present? Well, after we're doing more research, that's when I noticed that there was other articles of clothing found. So the blue style brief underwear he was wearing was a size small. So he was generally a petite male. Um, but yeah, that is, that is the Snake River John Doe. He was found at the mouth of the Snake River. So that's why they have nicknamed him that. Yeah. So it's like, this is another thing too. You think he would be called the John Doe of the Grand Ronde River because that's the mouth of the river that he was at. Like it's, it's attached to the Snake River, but still it's like another river. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, that is the case of the Snake River John Doe. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys tomorrow in another true crime case. So spinning round in my head,